In this video, I'm going to try and convince you why this is always true. Uh, but in order for me to do that, I require that you must know that if you have two vectors and they're at 90 degrees to each other, then the, then the, uh, the dot product of the two must equal zero. I require you to already know this. So let me just explain this statement here. Suppose you have a vector of constant magnitude. So imagine you've got a sphere, a surface. Um, uh, as the particle is moving around on this surface, so let's say, um, hang on, let's say the particle is here, and then it's moving around on the surface, on that sphere. Um, so each step of the way, hang on, so each step of the way, you will always know its position vector. Hang on, so this is its position vector, so that's r. So, uh, so n uh, another second later, the uh, position vector is there and so on. So you always know the position vector. So this is your position vector of magnitude, of a constant magnitude, because the radius of the sphere is always the same. And uh, so let's say the particle is here at the moment. So when you, um, when you differentiate, uh, when you differentiate that position vector, it will give you the velocity vector. And I'm, I'm expecting you to know this. So this is your, uh, your, your velocity vector. Differentiate it, and you have a a, um, a velocity vector that is always in the direction of uh, the movement of the particle. So hang on, let me clean this up. So you've got your you've got your position vector. That's this vector here. So that takes you to the position of the particle. So that's this r here. And then when you differentiate it, it will give you your velocity vector. And you could imagine that this is happening in 3D space. So, um, so what what this statement is saying is that the uh, the, vec the velocity vector and the position vector are always at 90 degrees, no matter how the particle is moving on that surface. <coughs> Excuse me. No matter how how that particle is moving on that surface of the sphere, the uh, the two vectors will always be at 90 degrees. So that that's what I'm trying to illustrate to you in this video. Okay, so in order for me to do that, I'm gonna I'm going to use 2D to explain what's happening in 3D. So I hope you can extrapolate it. So I'm going to use 2D to explain to explain it in 3D. So this statement will not be true if you have, let's say, an ellipse. So wait there. This that, that, that statement is not true when you have an ellipse, but it's always going to be true when it's a sphere or a circle. So this is your position vector here. That's this position vector here. So as, as the particle is moving around like this, um, you always know the position. Uh, you always know the position of that particle, which is given by this. As the particle is moving around on, on an ellipse, you always know the um, the position vector, which is given by this thing here, you always know its position. Now, when you um, when you differentiate when you differentiate this, it will give you this thing here. So that's your velocity vector. Let's just say it looks something like this. Uh, this is your position vector here. This is your position vector. This one here is your velocity vector. And what the statement is saying is that it's always at 90 degrees but it's not true when it's an ellipse so your position vector looks like this that's this thing here differentiate it it will give you your velocity vector so that will always be um, that will always be in the direction of the movement of the particle you see this is not 90 degrees whereas this will always be at 90 degrees regardless of where where the particle is it will always be at 90 degrees so if you're if you if the particle is moving on a sphere, you can extrapolate this thing here to a to a sphere up here, to a sphere. You can always extrapolate it in your mind that it will always be true with a sphere. So let me um, illustrate this in Desmos. So um, I've got a um, I've got a particle moving around in circles, and I've got a particle moving around in an ellipse. So let me illustrate that in Desmos. So this is um, if you um, if you punch this into Desmos, um, hang on, let me think. So this thing here is your, hang on. So so this thing here is your circle. So punch this into Desmos from 0 to 2 pi, that will draw a circle. 
and then you add your particle so this is your particle here hang on how do I hide this okay anyway this is your this is your particle here this blue circle here that that's your particle so as it's moving around the velocity vector and the um, and the position vector will always be at 90 degrees so now let me illustrate it with an ellipse so with an ellipse punches in that would draw your ellipse from 0 to 2 pi add your particle so that's this particle right here add your particle and then uh, and then l looking at this hang on looking at this it's moving around it's moving around like this and you can see that the two vectors are not always at um, at 90 degrees okay so suppose you're here granted it's 90 degrees here when when uh, when the angle is zero but as you move around you can see that it's not always at 90, 90 degrees by the time it gets to two um, to pi over two at 90 degrees then the two vectors are at 90 degrees and then as it gets to pi as the angle gets to pi, yes, it is at 90 degrees here, but it's not always at 90 degrees. Um, yes, here it's 90 degrees, but then the rest of the time, you can see it's not at 90 degrees. So, with a sphere, sorry, yeah, with a sphere or a circle, it will always be at 90 degrees. Whereas, um, whereas an ellipse, whereas an ellipse is not always at 90 degrees. So uh, let's try and understand why. Hang on. So let me pause this and jump back to the board. So let's try and understand why. Um, this is your this is your position vector. So that's so if you if you try and take the dot product of uh, of these two vectors. So your your position vector is given by this vector here, and uh, your velocity vector is given by this. So let's try and take the dot product of the two. It should, in this case, it should come to zero. So hang on. Uh, so the, remember, the dot product is this times this plus this times this. That will then give you this. And then you can see that uh, the two will cancel each other out, and it's always going to be equal to zero. That's why the that's why it's always at ninety degrees. Whereas if you look at the ellipse, if you look at the um, the ellipse. This is your, hang on. This is your, this is your position vector. So that's this thing here. This is your velocity vector, which is this thing here. Take the uh, the dot product. So the dot product will be this times this, plus this times this. That will then give you this. You can see that it it doesn't always equal to zero. Sometimes it equals zero. Uh, when it's at pi over 2 or pi or whatever but it's sometimes it's at, it equals 0 but not all the time whereas uh, this thing here will always be um, will always be equal to 0 so let me um, let me try and illustrate how you can do this for yourself in Desmos so in Desmos you punch this in um, that will draw that will draw the ellipse add your particle so let me get rid of these two um, you punch this in and then it will ask you to add a slider so click on add slider let's change it from 0 to um, to 2 pi 2 pi and then uh, and then that would then be your your particle and then uh, to add your to add your position vector so uh, click on here go to this plus sign thing and then add and then add table Desmos is not so good with uh, with working with vectors, so we've got to use this table. So you want to draw you want to draw your position vector. So it starts at the origin zero, zero, and then join it up with um, with the with five, hang on five, cos a, next box uh, two sine a. So that will then add what well. well You've got to um, see this circle thing here. Click on it for two seconds. Click, oh, click on it for two seconds, and th it doesn't work. Click on it for two seconds again, and then this this will pop up. Um, it doesn't work on a tablet for the time being, as of, as of this date. But um, if you there's a lines thing here, 
check click on it and then now you you've got your line here so now as you press play it will draw your position vector so hang on let me just get it to uh, play it in one direction only so click on this one direction only play so now it would it would just move around in one direction so so we've got our position vector now let's add our velocity vector so click on here and then go to add table so add add item and then add table and you want it to start at uh, that particular point so that would be 5 cos a uh, that's your starting position and then uh, what was it 2 sine a and then uh, so that's your starting position you want to join up with this this point here so you start at your position 5 cos a and then you plus plus the uh, velocity vector so hang on what was the velocity vector velocity vector is this thing here so the velocity vector is um, negative 5 sine and then later on is 2 cos negative 5 sine so hang on going back to here so it would be uh, negative so that would be minus 5 sine a and then uh, for this one here your your start your starting point will be 2 uh, sine a and then you add you add what was it uh, 2 cos a so that would be you see this point here you want to join it up with uh, with a line so click on this for two seconds and then it doesn't work so you try it again click on it for two seconds it still doesn't work so you try it again now it works so um, so how do I see the lines here drag that across now you've got your line and then now it should work so press play so you can try this for yourself okay